Hello people, in this uh, video we want to look at this topic skin and fascia. We are looking at it under general anatomy. So what do you mean by skin and fascia guys? First let's look at the skin. So basically skin is also called as cutis or derma. Okay. So basically you have heard of dermatology, right? You are le reading about hair, skin, nails, etc. So uh, skin is uh, a general covering of the external surface of the body. It is external covering. Okay. Skin is external covering. And um, it is also called as cutis or derma, that's this we told you. And it is actually the largest organ. It's an organ and it is the largest organ of your body. Okay. So skin, also called as cutis or derma. They are also calling it as integument, but we never heard that. Okay. Then coming to it is an organ, right? It is an external covering. What is it is covering the external surface of the body. This is all about skin. Okay. Then it is uh, this uh, skin is continuous with the mucous membranes of the orifices of the body. What is orifice? Now opening. So this is your mouth. Okay. In your mouth, inside your mouth, what do you have? Mucous membrane, right? So the skin is continuous with the mucous membrane of the orifice of the body, if that is important. Then what is fascia? Why uh, we are also there are uh, in this uh, chapter, they are also covering fascia. So what is fascia? Fasciae, fascia. So basically in that you have superficial fascia and deep fascia. So it is basically the coatings, something which you will find inside you. So it is the coating of the body beneath the skin. So if it is superficial fascia, if it is superficial fascia, it will be beneath the skin covering of body or you can say general coating of the body, but, but it is where it is beneath the skin. Beneath the skin, okay, and then you have deep fascia, which they are saying is a fibrous sheet which invests the body beneath the superficial fascia. Okay, so where is this? This is a fibrous sheet and it is beneath the superficial fascia. Beneath the superficial fascia. Okay, let us look at this image here. See, here they have shown deep fascia. Again, this is covering the muscle. So, this is also deep fascia. All these are deep fascias only. But if it was below the skin, that one you call as superficial fascia. Okay, what you are looking at here, all the uh, fascia here, this is deep fascia. This is also deep fascia because it is covering the muscle, isn't it? But if it is right below your skin, then you can call it a superficial fascia. Where do you have superficial fascia, guys? Uh, around your neck. Look at this, guys. This is the arm, cross section of your arm. Okay, so in this, let us try to understand where superficial fascia is, um, and deep fascia are. First of all, skin. Skin you have understood outside, right? Then superficial fascia, just below the skin, we have understood this, this. Then deep fascia is something that is covering the muscle. So that is your deep fascia. Okay, and deep fascia, so many things can be there. Like this is deep fascia and then, then you have deep fascia, another deep fascia here. So many fascias are there which will again then divide it into compartments, right? Then you will have... Uh, anterior compartment, posterior compartment and uh, within these uh, fascia whenever there is edema or there is uh, swelling, right, what will happen? There will be compartment syndrome, okay. So that's what you should remember the importance of this fascia. They will do a fasciotomy if there is compartment syndrome and there is, imagine there is so much of water here, edema, I mean fluid accumulation here. The person will be yelling with pain because the fascia is binding the muscle and inside there is so much of swelling, right. So that time they, what they do is a fasciotomy. So guys, this deep fascia <clears throat> actually is uh, devoid of fat, they are saying, and it is usually inas inelastic and tough. Maybe that is why these people develop uh, compartment syndrome. It's devoid of fat, it is inelastic, it's tough, okay. So that is the, um, oh, where are we here? So this is the deep fascia. Then you have understood what superficial fascia is. So now let's get started with the first thing, skin, okay. Now let's learn everything about skin in general anatomy, what and all you need to know about skin. So layers of skin, first of all, let's look at this. So you have epidermis, then you have the dermis, then you have below the skin what you call as the subcutaneous fat, okay. So that is not a part, but anyways, what is there below the dermis? Subcutaneous fat. So you have to learn only two things, epidermis and dermis. Shall we mention subcutaneous fat, okay. And there are two types of skin. Now you have thin skin and thick skin. So thin skin is uh, where you have almost everywhere in your body you have thin skin. It will have hair. Right and thick skin you will see on your palms and soles. Just see palms and soles. Just look at your palms and soles. There you don't have hair. So, that, so thick skin, palms and soles. There you don't have hair. So that is uh, thick skin. 
also fingertips uh, has thick skin they say but isn't that a pa part of palms itself so remember in uh, uh, thick skin there is no hair okay now when you come to uh, epidermis guys you have five layers inside the epidermis itself stratum corneum lucidum granulosum spinosum they say extra you have to know this anyways we will show you the diagram hold on okay so look at this thin skin shown here it has hair thick skin shown here no hair right and uh, basically you have what are the layers we told you epidermis and dermis right so you have to know epidermis and dermis and subcutaneous fat so here also they have shown you epidermis dermis and subcutaneous fat they have shown you can you see here dermis this is dermis then this is epidermis and then you have subcutaneous fat okay it's also called as hypodermis epidermis dermis hypodermis okay same thing see this in yellow guys uh, are you understanding so thin skin has hair thick skin doesn't have hair so thin skin shown here it has hair and uh, uh, to the hair attached you have a muscle erector pili muscle then you have sebaceous gland here to secrete all the oil that's why you get pimples right especially uh, because of the blockage of this uh, outlet of the sebaceous gland then here you have the you can have some uh, sweat glands also okay so you have understood there are two types of skin right thin skin and thick skin this much you have understood now look at the layers of epidermis this you need to understand because if you want to know exact fine differences between thick skin thin skin you need to understand this so these are the layers of epidermis of uh, don't say these are the layers of skin these are layers of just epidermis okay epidermis has again five layers under it stratum corneum stratum um, now corneum is outermost the dry with all the keratinocytes right uh, the dead ones uh, so basically this is corneum and below here you have the basal stratum basal okay so you can remember base the tail kind of thing and corneum outside kk keratin keratinocytes um, in your i also you have cornea which is outermost isn't it something like that you can remember c cornea keratin outside okay so basically uh, in between these uh, two that is the uh, stratum corneum and stratum basal you have three layers stratum lucidum stratum granulosum and stratum spinosum what are those layers stratum lucidum stratum granulosum and stratum spinosum and uh, remember that in um, uh, thick skin this lucidum will be there okay this lucidum is actually there in the thick skin but in thin skin because it's thin you will not have this layer uh, they are saying that this layer is actually absent in lucid uh, in thin skin so did you understand the layers uh, stratum corneum stratum lucidum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum stratum basal st uh, the spinosum and basal together are called as the malpighian layer lucidum is there in the thick skin right uh, these are the layers of epidermis okay this is actually the outside one corneal uh, corneal layer they have marked it as actually dead how is it going people what are we looking at we have looked at the layers of epidermis very good so uh, now can uh, now let us look at the layers of dermis what do you see so here we are we have looked at the layers of skin epidermis dermis subcutaneous fat you should not actually mention as layer of skin okay then you have types of skin you have thick uh, thin skin and thick skin right so now layers of dermis let us look at look at this people dermis actually nicely they have mentioned here so you have papillary dermis reticular dermis okay so papillary dermis and then you have reticular dermis we have seen this in our pathology videos anyways uh, see here um, we have the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis see the dermis is the one that has everything blood vessels lymphatics nerves and nexal structures like sweat gland sebaceous gland hair follicles erectile pili muscles nails everything is dermis only okay and below the dermis you have the hypodermis or the subcutaneous fat okay here there's one terminology you should know like rete ridges what is rete ridges you should understand cone shaped cone shaped dermal papillae extend upwards into the epidermis forming peg like rete ridges actually i don't feel like it's extending upwards i feel like it's more like extending downwards but anyway see the reticular dermis is extending upward you can say like this right cone shaped dermal papillae extending upwards into the epidermis forming peg like rete ridges so these are the rete ridges okay so what is the rete ridges here you have papillary dermis and here you have the reticular dermis so we have added that here so papillary dermis then rete reticular dermis between you have this rete ridges like papillary like projections into the epidermis from the reticular dermis and it is the reticular uh, or it is the dermis as such that has almost everything that we spoke about hair follicles sebaceous glands sweat glands erectile pili muscle etc now let us look at the pigments of skin you have melanin which is brown there are many pigments okay just let's understand melanin first so what is this diagram trying to tell us here you have the five layers of the epidermis then here 
they have shown you the radial ridges then here you have the papillary dermis and then you have the reticular dermis so what are we trying to look for all these pigments right so epidermis and dermis they have shown here so in the basal layer where all this germination they are saying so this is the germination layer right this is where you are seeing what is this called as a melanocyte from which you are getting this pigment melanin isn't it so melanin is one of the pigment so it is brown in color present in the germinative zone of the epidermis okay then you have melanoid it resembles melanin and it's present diffusely through the epidermis okay this is more at the bottom right that is in the germinative zone and this one is more like diffusely throughout the epidermis it is diffusely present then then you have carotene carotene is yellow to orange carotene is yellow to orange and uh, present in the stratum corneum and the fat cells of the dermis and the superficial fascia so where in all you see this in stratum corneum okay that is outermost touch your skin carotene 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 actually this carotene right and then you have it is also there in the fat cells of the dermis and the superficial fascia also that means where the superficial fascia fascia just below the skin okay then you have hemoglobin hemoglobin is purple wow i would have said red actually but they are saying it says purple with all the iron hemoglobin is there guys and then you have oxy hemoglobin which sounds even more beautiful okay now it makes sense oxy hemoglobin is the red one and just hemoglobin is that that means to say it is deoxy that means it doesn't have oxygen so oxygen will be red and without oxygen will be purple now it makes so much sense and where is this present oxy hemoglobin it is present in the cutaneous vessels that is in the blood cutaneous vessels in the blood vessels of which are very superficial uh, in your skin so in the cutaneous skin is cutaneous you can say cutis so cutaneous vessels in your blood vessels okay so this is what the textbook says as uh, pigments of skin where i would say this is not at all a pigment of skin if it is in the blood vessel these two these three definitely seems like pigment of skin right okay now look at some cells okay which are there uh, in the skin guys uh, cells in the skin okay so we have learnt about melanocyte yes in the germinative layer in the uh, you can see here melanocyte is there uh, we have seen in the basal layer melanocytes are sitting nicely here then what else are you seeing uh, here keratinocytes yes keratinocytes uh, we are seeing uh, very easy to understand keratinocytes costitum corneum yes so melanocyte keratinocyte you have understood so so what now we have understood so far now we have just written here see stratum basal has melanocytes stratum cornea has the pigment carotene and uh, this epidermis is from ectoderm dermis is from mesoderm dermis is the actual uh, they saying this is the actual real real skin this is the one that actually they make leather from okay so this um, is the real skin when they say they make leather from the dermis layer when it uh, when it's dried right it becomes that hide okay and then it you will tan it and it will become leather so that is why dermis they are saying is the real skin what are the functions of skin let's look at the functions of skin it's time to look at the functions of skin should be very easy for you to say isn't it what are the functions of skin guys to look beautiful is it so basically it is protection it will protect you it is the external covering of your body isn't it so it is uh, fun uh, it is protection then sensory you have a lot of uh, sensations that you can feel via so many receptors you have sensation to touch pain temperature right it will regulate your body temperature obviously after taking all the sensory input what will it do it will regulate body temperature so it will help you sweat etc right so it wants to control your body temperature this uh, uh, this point here regulate body temperature guys you should understand even your um, hair right that is on your body it will protect it will uh, allow heat to get trapped it won't al allow it to get lost right that's why you get these goosebumps etc when you are very cold right the hair will stand erect right erectile pili muscle will make your hair stand straight goosebumps they call it as so all that is used for regulation of body temperature then absorption all those beautiful creams that people want to apply if they are oily based they are actually absorb better but oily based will give pimples so uh, anyways absorption also can happen via skin then coming to secretion it can secrete 
sweat and sebum that is oil secretion you saw that there are sweat glands seb sebaceous glands so obviously secretion then excretion what do you excrete water salts waste products are also excreted through sweat and even your skin actually uh, sh sheds off isn't it your stratum corneum it actually kind of sheds off so that also you can say kind of a excretion it not only regulates your body temperature it regulates ph how is that possible so how can it regulate um, ph ph is what acidity alkalinity so basically acid is excreted through sweat acid in sweat right so if it excretes acid in a sweat then you will be less acidic very good so that's nice then synthesis what can skin make synthesis synthesis of vitamin d so because because you have uh, this in your skin what do you have in your skin zoom here in skin you have 7 dehydrocholesterol that is with the help of uv light it is converted into to choleic calcium ferrol or calcium okay in liver it is uh, helped uh, you will convert into calcium diol and then your kidney will help convert it into calcium triol which is the one that you need okay calcium triol is what is required for your uh, body right so calcium triol is very very important calcium triol is vitamin d actually and it will help in calcium absorption so that is why vitamin d is so important and from where you can see uh, all this is happening in the skin this is getting converted okay uh, uh, cholesterol the textbook actually is saying ergosterol don't go by that that is actually in plants okay in humans it is a 7 dihydrocholesterol in uh, animals dihydrocholesterol cholesterol is getting converted remember it's a nice way of utilizing cholesterol isn't it so what were we looking at we are looking at the uh, functions of skin synthesis we saw then what else guys you will write storage what does the skin store it stores uh, clo chlorides it says storage of chlorides actually this should be cholesterol one second cholesterol okay storage of chlorides then reparative that means it will repair repair your cuts wounds are quickly healed so that is also a function of skin anyways that is the whole thing about protection isn't it so you can cover it there itself anyway so uh, you have looked at the functions of skin protection sensory regulate temperature absorption secretion excretion regulation of ph synthesis of vitamin d storage of chlorides repair see the sensory is not as simple as this you will have to write a little more under sensory guys so uh, you will have some nerve endings okay in the skin special nerve endings which will help in sensation like touch pressure guys so uh, pain so all this you'll have to know the names so touch basically uh, you have uh, what and all uh, touch and pressure are mesner's corpuscles you can see here where exactly they are see okay they are here they are found in the dermal papillae so the mesner's corpuscles okay particularly in your uh, palm soles and in your fingertips right so this is what you should know that your fingers has mesner's corpuscles so just imagine you touch everything with your finger right mesner's corpuscles are there right for touch etc pressure etc then you have pessinae pessinae also you should remember uh, these are but these are deeper okay so these are located deeper in weight bearing surfaces pessinae also so it is deeper so mesner that shown on top pessinae is uh, deeper this you should know then what else you should know here you know you should know this one uh, for pain and all what and all pain and all you have lot of nerves anyways then you have merkel merkel see merkel cells are there right merkel cells see if you go back here to the epidermis where is it here in epidermis you saw that you have keratinocytes melanocytes you have the langerhan cells also which help in actually immune okay and then you have the merkel cells basically these merkel cells are very closely associated with these nerve endings which will uh, you know receive touch sensation so here also they have given you that only merkel okay merkel uh, they have given you so anyways you should remember only mesner's corpuscles and pessinae this much is enough for now let's write that here mesner's and pessinae touch and pressure mesner pessinae pessinae you can remember for pressure uh, this one is more uh, on top right pessinae uh, sorry mesner's on top and pessinae is kind of lower down pain also you have then coming to uh, this uh, uh, secretion part okay so here you have acrine and then you have something called as apocrine So, acrine, um, I know, as simple as secretion, but apocrine, uh, the 
the cell, a part of the cell comes out, okay. See, the part of the spell, cell is pinched off. Pinched off portion of the cell is actually the secretion, that is apocrine, okay. <coughs> so, that is what uh, is about sweat gland, you should know. Okay, guys, so in uh, the uh, sec uh, Secretion of sweat, you should remember some things like this. So basically, let us look at uh, the functions of skin in yet another different way. Look at this, uh, the functions of skin. Let's put it here. Okay, functions of skin, it protects you against chemicals, ultraviolet radiations, antigens, haptons, microbes. So these things, even worms and all, they'll try to enter by skin, okay. So who is protecting you against, especially your uh, epidermis, that is your statum corneum. And who is uh, protecting your immune? You saw that the Langerhans cells are protecting you from uh, all these antigens, haptons, microbes, etc. And when it comes to this melanocytes, it makes melanin, so it will protect you from this ultraviolet radiation, right? Chemicals as such, you can remember, stratum corneum is protecting you. Okay, then coming to uh, how will you uh, have a temperature regulation, etc. Uh, stratum corneum, it says, uh, uh, again, stratum corneum prevents water loss, electrolytes and uh, macromolecules. Then coming to temperature regulation, you have the sweat glands, especially the eccrine sweat glands. Then you have the blood vessels, temperature regulation. Again, your erector pili muscle hair also will help in temperature regulation. Insulation will be your subcutaneous fat, which is kind of not considered a part of the skin, I thought. Sensation, we told you pain, specialized nerve endings will be there. Then you have the uh, Meissner's corpuscles and the Pessini uh, touch and pressure. Then you have the Merkel cells also. Then you have the lubrication, which happens because of the sweat, uh, sebaceous glands. Vitamin D synthesis, we told you this happens uh, in uh, because of uh, conversion of cholesterol into the calciol in the skin with the help of UV light. Uh, that will be done in the keratinocytes, uh, body odor. Uh, okay, is that a function? Okay, uh, apocrine. This is the apocrine sweat. Uh, sweat glands they are uh, attributing to body odor interestingly and beauty see uh, when they talk about uh, hair and nails actually these are skin appendages okay skin and its appendages when it, they mean appendages they mean hair and nail okay great guys so you have looked at the functions of skin in so many ways now look at some clinical anatomy for the skin okay so especially whenever there's burns right you should know this um, rule of nine where is that rule of nine uh, based on the amount of burn, right, you will uh, have to calculate the fluid requirement. So, that is called as rule of valves, rule of uh, 9, okay. So, uh, look at this, um, 999, nine, nine. you can divide uh, the front part of your uh, uh, thorax. This is your thorax, right, 9%, abdomen 9%, back is 9%, uh, lower back 9%. Then here you have the front of your uh, lower limb is 9, nine and behind is 9, nine. So, everything is, this is rule of 9. But however, um, uh, see front of arm is four and a half and uh, uh, back of arm is four and a half. So you can remember a whole of your right limb is uh, nine and whole of your left limb is also nine. And uh, head also front is uh, four and a half, back is four and a half. So head is nine. So this is a better way of remember is something like this. Look at this. We'll take a man. Okay, we'll only write. Bring this man here and we'll only tell him what you are. Okay, we'll tell him. Man, your head, 9. Your right hand, 9. Your left hand, 9. Okay, left arm, arm, 9. Okay, left upper limb um, and right upper limb, 9, 9. Okay, this one is 9. This one is 9. Turn back, back side also, 9 and 9. Okay, for this part. Then, leg, front 9, back 9. Here, lower limb, back also, 9. So, this is all you have to remember. Genitalia is 1%. Genitalia is one percent because this. So everything nine 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 it became ninety ninety nine. So you add one more percent, right? It has to become hundred percent, right? Your total body surface area. That one is coming from your genitalia. Okay. For children, the rule is slightly different. There are seven and all here. Okay. So what you saw now is for burns, burns giving fluids. You know, so much of fluid you'll have to give. That is uh, what is the rule for that? You have the Parkland formula, Brook formula. Remember Parkland, okay? 4 ml, you have to give crystalloids only, remember 4 ml per, so you can write 4 into total body surface area burn, total body surface area burn percentage, percentage of total body surface area, okay, that is the burn. So how much uh, is this guy burnt? Let us say he is burnt around 50%, okay, and he is actually 50 kgs this man okay 50 percent uh, body surface area burnt and he's 50 kgs so you will give 4 ml per this much so you will give 4 into 25 
zero zero, right? So that will be around. This will become hundred, and it will become zero zero. So you will have to give ten liters, isn't it, of crystalloid volume? Did that sound about right? So this is what is the clinical importance of all this uh, body surface area. Let's get back here. Burns, we told you, fluid requirement. You have the park, park land formula, <clears throat> which is four mL into kg into percentage of total body surface area burn. Okay, something like this is actually four mL per crystalloid. You have to give. What you should give? Crystalloid. So this is crystalloid. So, like ringolactate, isn't it? Normal saline, ringolactate are crystalloids. So this you can use for the burns patient. Okay. Then what else uh, about uh, skin? You should know, guys. Leprosy. See, these people will have uh, anesthetic patches. Leprosy. So many fevers like uh, uh, like dengue, etc. There can be fever with rash, right? So you should know this rickettsial fever, etc. Uh, so many things are there. Then where, where do you observe skin? You know, and people, where do you observe skin? You observe pallor. For pallor, you can see the palms and uh, nails and all, right? For pallor, you can see palms, nails. Actually, pallor you will see lower palpebral conjunctiva. So, if the person has anemia, less hemoglobin, right? So, uh, you can see they are, they will be pale, right? Pallor, so that you can check. You can check for cyanosis. That is, if they are blue, blue, right? Uh, because of some uh, uh, oxygen uh, not reaching. So, cyanosis. You can check uh, their skin. If they have jaundice, they will have. Uh, Yellow, yellow, so yellow their skin, right? So all that skin color, then patches. See, there are so many things in uh, skin. See, there are some terminologies that they use in um, uh, skin. Okay, like macule, uh, a larger one is the patch, pacule, a larger one is a nodule, vesicle, bullae, right? If these are some terminologies that you should know. Okay, macule, patch, pacule, nodule, vesicle, bullae. At least this much you know, and um, you should know. Uh, macule patch. These are flat. Okay, if it's small, it's macule. If it's large, it's patch. Papule. If it's elevated, it is a papule or a vesicle or a pustule. If it has pus, right? And if it's large, the corresponding thing will be nodule, bulla, etc. Okay. So basically, we are looking at the uh, clinical anatomy of skin. When do you actually see all this, right? Then there are many conditions like. Um, Scabies and all wherever there is uh, insects, right? Scabies, itch mite, itch mite. It will burrow into your uh, skin, etc. So scabies, very itchy, itchy. These people will have. It's a mite infection. You should know this. This is very common when you go to um, when you're sitting in dermatology. You will see a lot of scabies. What else do you see when you're sitting in dermatology, guys? Have you visited? Have you attended dermatology clinics? I think for now this much is enough in skin. Okay. So in this video, basically, we have we wanted to look at this uh, general anatomy topic skin. We have looked at mostly skin only, right? Uh, skin uh, is basically also called as cutis derma. It is a uh, it is an organ. It's actually covering the external surface of the body. Fascia is something that covers the deep structures in your body. Superficial fascia is something that you find beneath the skin. Deep fascia is something which is uh, beneath the superficial fascia. Anyways, now coming to skin, this is what we wanted to focus on. Uh, skin has uh, these layers: epidermis. And dermis, um, epidermis actually is from ectoderm. It has keratinocytes, Langerhans cells. It has melanocytes in the basal layer. It has melanocytes. You have Langerhans cells, which helps in immunity. You have the Merkel cells, etc. Uh, Merkel cells are in some areas, looks like. And then in the dermis, you have these la uh, layers: the corneum, which is outside cornea, cor keratinocytes. Remember, it has pigment, carotene also. Stratum lucidum, which is present in uh, Uh, thick skin, you will have the stratum lucidum. Then you have the stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and then stratal basal, the lowest part of the epidermis, basal. It will have these melanocytes, which make what melanin. Now coming to dermis, you have uh, in that uh, this is the actual skin we are seeing. It is from a mes from mesoderm. It is a mesodermal origin, and it is actually called as true skin. That is, this is where we make hide leather from. Okay, it has papillary dermis. Then you have the reticular dermis between these. So you what you have what is called as the reticular ridges, right? The reticular dermis, the dermis actually is the one that has your hair follicles, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, the erector pili, muscle, etc. Below the dermis, you have the hypodermis or the subcutaneous fat or the subcutis, you can say. Then coming to the types of skin, you have seen that there is the two types of skin. You have the <coughs> You have the thin skin and the thick skin. Uh, the thin skin has hair. That is, most of your body is covered with thin skin. Thick skin is where your palms, soles, uh, etc. So basically, 
um, there is no hair in your thick skin and the stratum lucidum is actually more prominent here. Then coming to the pigments of skin, uh, pigments of skin you have seen that um, you have the melanocytes giving you melanin, uh, whereas this melanocytes there in your germinative zone that is in the stratum basale of your epidermis. Then uh, melanoid is something like melanin, this is more diffuse in your entire epidermis, but melanin is more towards the um, stratum basale. You can say carotene is um, uh, uh, containing the stratum, uh, carotene is present, uh, it's a yellow orange pigment which is present in your stratum corneum. Hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin that is if hemoglobin has oxygen it will be red, blood vessels will have this, um, if there is no oxygen hemoglobin which is more purple, okay. That is again in the blood vessels you can see. Skin functions, um, basically uh, what are the functions of skin you have looked at this, uh, protection, it will protect you from um, uh, chemicals like the stratum corneum will protect you from chemicals, melanocytes will protect you from ultraviolet radiations, the Langerhans cell which is about the immune protects you from antigens, haptans, microbes etc. So it is your immune uh, against all these. So, then coming to uh, temperature etc, who will help you, it will maintain a balanced environment, stratum corneum, stratum corneum also prevents the loss of water, electrolytes, uh, macromolecules, right, it's like more like a wrap your wrap with the skin, right? It, then uh, temperature regulation happens because of your blood vessels, uh, your eccrine sweat glands, your hair, ele erector pili muscle, which uh, will make your hair stand up, etc. Insulation is happening because of your subcutaneous fat. Sensations are happening because of specialized nerve endings, like we told you, the touch and pressure because of the mysnus and pacinite corpuscles, right? Pain also. That's the sensation. Then lubrication happens because of your sebaceous glands. Uh, vitamin D synthesis happens because of your keratinocytes. That is cholesterol is converted into uh, calciol uh, because of um, uh, ultraviolet rays in the sun. So is that the only thing you need uh, your sunlight for? Yes, it's a sunshine vitamin without which you cannot make vitamin D. Body odor, um, apocrine, sweat glands, beauty. Hair and nails are actually called as skin appendages, okay, skin and its appendages means they refer to hair and nails, okay. Then what else did we see? Clinical anatomy, we saw that in burns they use a rule of uh, 9 or the rule of valis to find out the total body surface area that is burnt and based on this you will calculate the fluid requirement, uh, we have taken the example of Parkland formula, there are many formula anyways, you will give crystalloid 4 ml per kg uh, body weight uh, into the percentage of total body a, uh, surface area burn. What you should remember here, uh, this again has a lot of details under it as to first 8 hours what you will give, for, then for within 24 hours how much you will give. It's a lot of calculation here which uh, is not required but at least remember that there's a parkland formula. Then in leprosy etc you will see anesthetic patches, right. Um, then fever with rash could be a dengue or uh, uh, a Japanese encephalitis or something. Fever with rash you should remember, okay. Then pallor, uh, how will you check? You will actually check superior palpebral conjunctiva, right? You will actually check the supi, sorry, inferior, inferior palpebral conjunctiva. Am I saying that correct? This one, this is the inferior palpebral conjunctiva where you check the pallor of the eye, right? Then um, the palms uh, and what is this? Nail. Name, name. Okay, you can check all that. Uh, pallor, pallor means uh, they'll have, uh, they can have uh, anemia, low hemoglobin. Okay, cyanosis uh, with a lot of car oxygen deprivation, is it? Then coming to uh, jaundice, you can check yellowing uh, color. Scabies, there will be a mite infection. Okay, a lot of uh, rashes. I mean, uh, they'll scratch your body a lot. So, guys, in this video, we have looked at uh, the general anatomy of a skin. Okay. When it comes to fascia, uh, the only thing you have to know about is the uh, uh, compartment syndrome, okay, which is a clinical anatomy for you. So whenever there is uh, edema, etc., and uh, the fascia are actually the deep fascia is actually very uh, tight. We told you it is inelastic. So when there is increase of pressure inside here, there will be a lot of pain because of the fascia. Then they will cut the fascia. They do a fascia to me to relieve the pain. So that is the compartment syndrome, which is a uh, clinical anatomy for your fascia. So that's it guys, in this video we have looked at the general anatomy topic skin. Bye bye.